Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Today, we start previewing the play-in rounds for the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs, starting off with Toronto and the Columbus Blue Jackets. So if you follow my Instagram, I haven't posted it on Twitter yet. My Instagram is in the link description below, um, Nordic97 underscore IG. So if you guys want to go follow me, uh, that's cool. You don't, you don't have to. Um, I post video schedules on there on, and that on Twitter too. So follow my Twitter or Instagram if you want to see the full, uh, full schedule. But the next four days from today to, Thursday, to Tuesday are going to be packed with videos. And CBJ versus Toronto is the first one we're going to review. Chicago versus Edmonton is Toronto. Toronto is tomorrow. Um, I'm not too. I can't. Uh, Pittsburgh versus Pittsburgh versus Montreal is on Sunday, and Pittsburgh versus Montreal is on Sunday, and Calgary versus Edmonton is on Monday, and then I have some. I have. I think I'm. I don't think I have anything planned on Tuesday. So sorry about that. I just had a little bit of error. But yeah, the next four days are gonna be stacked. With playoff previews, so I hope you guys are ready for this. And I might just, like, knock them all out so I can just upload them throughout the course of next week. Because as you, because as some of you guys may know, if you follow my Twitter, which is in the link in the description below, um, I am going on to, I'm going to Hershey Park for a few days for Father's Day. So I will not, I actually, I might make videos, but, like, I'm not going to make, they're not going to be, like, the highest quality. And the only really time i'm gonna make videos if there's huge news so just just let you know so here we go anyways let's just get into the preview before we lose our minds talking about my personal life toronto and columbus are actually tied in the entire league with their records i mean they're not the same but points points they're tied with so that's kind of that's kind of interesting 36 25 and 9 their goals scored 238 goals that's third now, one thing I've been noticing with these previews as I've been taking down the stats and stuff is that it's like unless you're Boston or like any team that's like above, that's like in the top, not even the top three. Like it's probably only just Boston that, that is, that maybe, maybe Tampa that's with this. Like you have like 200 and two, over 200 goals scored and then you have let in over three, over like 220. So it's like your goals, your goals are like, Amazing. You're, they're incredible. They're like third in the league, like Toronto's is. Or it's just like bottom, like 227 goals, 27th, which is what Toronto is. So it's one way or the other. Your goals are horrible. Your goaltending's incredible. Or defense, you mean. Or your goals are amazing and your goaltending and defense are horrible. So top three players for each team. Austin Matthews leads the way for Toronto with 47 goals, 33 assists for 80 points. Number two is Mitch Marner, 16 goals, 51 assists for 67 points. And finally, number three is John Tavares with 26-34 for 60 points. Now, the interesting thing I saw with Toronto's goaltenders is looking at these statistics, Jack Campbell actually has a higher goals against average or a lower goals against average than Anderson, who has who was the starter. So, and and also I saw this in a video. So you have, you have Tuka Rask for the Bruins, and he has these amazing goals against average and these amazing wins and amazing shutouts. And I think Halak has them too, of course, because he's the backup of the best team in the league. And you look at that, it's more than, li it's more than likely not 100% not the goaltender. It's more than likely the defense. Now, Anderson has played the same amount of time as Tuka Rask, but he has a lower goals against average and a lower save percentage than him, and that proves that Toronto's defense, he has not played with the best defense over the past couple of years. He's faced the most shots in NHL history over the past 10 years. Anderson, Toronto needs better defense if they're going to. But, like, the thing is, though, with Columbus, I think they, I think they might actually be fine against Columbus. Like, I mean, like, yes, Columbus is a dangerous team. Any of these teams is dangerous. Like, any of these teams could go all the way. But Columbus does not have a lot of goals scored. So Columbus had a problem with scoring goals. Toronto had a problem with defense. Like so. And that, and with Toronto being so good with goals, 
and Columbus being so good with defense, I'm starting to wonder if Toronto can really put the puck in the net against this Columbus defense. And when you really think, and and it's a three game series, not not the five or seven game series that you would maybe you would usually see in some some playoff series. This is three games. So just keep that in mind that it's a three game series. So it can take any you just have to win two. You don't have to win three, you have to win two. So any team could do this. And with go and I gotta finish up my statistics here. With goaltenders, the first goaltender, Freddie Anderson, 29 wins, 2.85 goals against average, a .909 save percentage. And three shutouts. Jack Campbell is the is the backup, projected backup. With Eleven wins, two point eighty goals against average, point nine zero four save percentage, and zero shutouts. Now Toronto's defense isn't that that bad, but there's a ton of injuries on this team. So with the extended amount of time that Toronto has in the break before we start, which could be like, which could be, which the training camps are starting July tenth, which means the the playoffs are likely going to start around July 20th, maybe the end of July. So maybe early August, does that matter? So all these players like Jake Muzzin, who I think has a broken hand, has a lot of time to heal. And, I mean, they've already had a lot of time to heal, to be fair. So it's been about two months. So with them healing, all these players are going to be, are the, all these players are going to be fresh and ready to go. Hopefully. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. With Columbus... They have the same, not the same record, but they have the same amount of points as Toronto with a 33, 22, and 15 for 81 points. Goals scored, as I said, Columbus had a really big problem with scoring this year. 180 goals scored. That was 29th in the league. And then with their goals against average, 187 goals is fourth best in the league. So... Columbus has a really good goaltending tandem, and they really surprised me this season, to be honest. I mean, I've watched them play. I, I went to a game and watched them play. So I saw them play in person, is what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to say. But with this team, I'm pretty sure that <coughs> excuse me. When I talk a lot now, I'm not used to making videos now since I like took kind of a week off. I mean, I made, I made videos during the last week, but like I'm kind of not really used to it. With this. I personally think that that Toronto's going to have a really big problem scoring against Columbus, even though they are like third best in the league in scoring. Like, no matter no matter what you rank in scoring, that doesn't that doesn't project what is going to happen. I mean, like you can predict what's going to happen, but it doesn't say it does. That's you don't know that you'll know what's going to happen. That's the best thing about the playoffs; it's unpredictable. Their top three playoffs, pe- top three playoffs. Top three players, Pierre-Luc Dubois with 18 goals, 31 assists for 49 points. Number two is Gustav Nyquist for 15 goals, 27 assists for 42 points. And finally, number three is Zach Wierenski with 20 goals, 21 assists for 41 points. Goaltending, Columbus is goaltending, and Columbus altogether, to be honest, has really surprised me. I did not think... Coming into this season with Bobrovsky heading to Florida, I was like, oh, crap. Columbus is going to be horrible this season. But they weren't. They were surprisingly much better. And I know we've already, we've already had this conversation. You would think that, like, at least one of these, at least one of the players from the team, Dushin, Dushin left, Panarin left, Bobrovsky left. They all left. So you think after sweeping the first-place team last year, and Toronto's got to really think about that, and of course, especially since they've gone out – in the first round, three years in a row, and then you went, and then it's only, it's been pretty much four years, four years in a row. So it might as well be four years in a row because Boston in twenty thirteen, and that doesn't help. That doesn't help knowing that these this team swept a for this team swept Tampa last year. But like that, that was not that's not the team that we have right now. All these players, most of these players that are on this team right now, yes, they were a part of that club. They were a part of. That Columbus team, but were they big players? Some of most of them weren't. So I'm gonna admit that most of them really weren't. And with this, Columbus gold Columbus goaltending was really worrisome because it's Jonas Corpusal, who was the backup. You got the backup coming up, and then you have Kivalekins and Merzlikins. You have no 
Columbus doesn't really have any good goaltending prospects, to be honest with you. Like, it's, it's Ekins, I guess. But, like, apart from that, not really. So, Corbisalo with 18 wins. Or, sorry, yeah, sorry, 18 wins. 2.60 goals against average. A .911 save percentage. And two shutouts. Elvis Merzlikens, to be honest... People, people might be saying this is a fluke and we might have to wait until next season to be like, hold on a second, maybe Merzlikens can be a legit player. But Merzlikens had 13 wins, 2.35 goals against average, a .923 save percentage, and five shutouts. He's leading everything past the starter, Corpusalo, except for wins. <coughs> Excuse me. And you look at that, that's actually unbelievable. And yes, Corpusalo... Was injured and he, that blew that kind of blows my that kind of blows my mind that like even though he's a backup that he would be ahead in almost everything except wins for some weird reason like why wouldn't you be ahead of wins and I might be I'm starting to think that maybe Merzlikens actually should be maybe the maybe the permanent backup for Columbus I personally think that he should be because you look at these stats. Even though Corpusala was injured, he still has he still has much, much better statistics than Corpy in like this season. So and yes, it was in short amount of time, and yes, they probably could have gotten more dubs. And yes, I don't know. But you never know what's gonna happen. So my final prediction, Toronto fans, you're gonna hate me, even though we have a franchise mode for this team. I predict that Columbus will win two to one. In the season series. So there you go. Columbus will win 2-1. to one. Um, Columbus will lose the first game to Toronto. But then they will win the next two. To win the playoff round. And then they'll go. And depending on what the reseeding is. I don't know if they'll face Boston, Philly. Or any of those other teams. In the round. In the first round by teams. So yeah. Anyways. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy. Make sure to leave a like. That subscribe button. If I missed anything. Or made any errors. Let me know. Because. I'm an idiot. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.